Hello, my name is Mark Thorne and I'm a specialist in range and livestock management with the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I want to thank you for joining me for my presentation. In this presentation, I'm going to provide an overview and update on the two-line spittlebug activity over this past year, what we've learned about the pest so far, and cover some of our research and outreach efforts. I'm going to finish up by describing the two-line spittlebug mobile application that we are currently developing. The two-line spittlebug, Prosopia bicincta, was recorded on the island of Hawaii in 2016 on the western coast in the Kailua Kona area, where it would, had caused significant damage to the pastures. This species of spittlebug is native to the southeast United States, where it has long been recognized as a pest of pasture and grass turf. In, Ho in Hawaii, the pest has rapidly spread and now infests a little over 176,000 acres and threatens the livestock industry in the state. Kukuyu grass and pangola grass, among others, uh, that make up most of the forage base for the cattle industry in the state have proven to be highly susceptible to spittlebug feeding and have quickly died out when tutelin spittlebug adult populations reach critical levels. The rapid loss of these grasses creates an environment conducive to the rapid colonization of many noxious weeds, including pomacani, wild blackberry, fireweed, helo grass, and many others. As a result of the rapid conversion of two-line spittlebug affected rangelands, ranches have been forced to drastically reduce livestock numbers due to the lack of suitable forage, placing a financial strain on the sustainability of their operations. Consequently, this pest poses a major threat to Hawaii's pasture-based livestock industry. Morphologically, the nymphs are smaller than the adults, lack wings, and have yellow, white, or orange bodies while their heads are brown with red eyes, and they have two orange patches on either side of their abdomen. Two-line spittlebug adults are vividly marked by two orange or red bands that traverse their black wings. Their heads, abdomen, and legs are a deep red color. Adults can jump and fly and live for about four weeks. Each two-line spittlebug female can lay up to 150 eggs, starting at seven days post-emergence as an adult. Eggs are laid at or just below the soil surface near the crown and along the roots of, of the grass plants the adults are feeding on. Eggs can either hatch within the same season after about 19 days or, based on conditions, be laid as diapause eggs. In Hawaii, the pest enters diapause by November with very little activity over winter. Diapause breaks around April or May. After hatch, the nymphs immediately begin to feed and progress through five instar stages, completing their development in about 50 days, encased within a spittle mass they create. The complete life cycle of the two-line spittlebug takes about 76 days. Typically, there are two generations per year. Both nymphs and adults feed on the grasses, albeit at different locations of the plant. The nymphs feed on the roots and crowns of the grass plants that, to a limited extent, can lead to water stress and decreased productivity of the plant. Nymph feeding alone does not lead to plant death. The adults feed on the xylem fluid and release amylase, an enzyme that breaks down starches into simple sugars, into the plant. As amylase builds up in the plant, it interferes with photosynthesis and carbohydrate translocation and storage. Ultimately, this results in phytotoxemia, the consequence of which is the browning and eventual death of the plant leaf material. At the very least, two-line spittlebug adult feeding decreases the productivity and nutritional value and palatability of the key forages for grazing. In the worst case, though, it results in the complete die-off of key forage grasses and a rapid transition to unpalatable, non-native invasive weeds. Monthly survey data collected along transects established beginning in 2017 have revealed that the pest is expanding its range at about 35,000 acres per year. Initial estimates of the pest range in 2016 when it was first recorded covered just under 30,000 acres. By the fall of 2020, the pest could be found within 176,000 
acre area from Puwawa in the north to Honanao in the south. Damage from adult two-line spittlebug feeding can accumulate very quickly under the right conditions and population size. The pictures in this slide show the rapid die-off of Kukuyu grass shortly after a two-line spittlebug outbreak and six months later in January of 2019. Two-line spittlebug activity was noted in this location starting in April 2018, and by June of 2018, the pest had caused damage noted by the red outline in the picture on the left. The population density reached a critical level later that summer, and by January, all the Kukuyu grass beyond the original infestation in the red boundary, covering nearly 200 acres, had browned and began to die. Two-line spittlebug damage goes through stages, sometimes separated by a season. Because of this, the pasture can be a mosaic of healthy grasses, such as at A, small patches of dead grasses, such as at B, and mature infestations that are large and giving way to invading weeds, such as at C. Early infestations, when adult populations are low, result in small patches of dead grass from adult feeding, shown here at B. These small patches develop in otherwise healthy grass communities when emerging adults from nearly nearby heavily damaged areas, such as C, move to find suitable feeding and ha habitat. Subsequent generations of adults at B, often spanning two seasons, will increase exponentially and reach catastrophic levels that result in widespread damage, as in C. The next couple of slides show images collected from the same transect, HULT1, and the accompanying graphic of spittlebug nymph densities collected from May of 2018 to November of 2019 along six different transects spanning a range of elevations. In May of 2018, the pasture at HULT1 was a typical healthy mid-elevation kukuyu grass pasture comprised of 85% kukuyu and pangola grass, 10% white clover, and a spattering of various weeds. The first spittlebug nymphs were recorded along the transect HULT1, depicted by the dark blue line in the graphic, in May of 2018. Spittlebug densities in 2018 progressed through two generations with a small 10 nymph per square meter peak in June and a larger 35 nymph per square meter peak in October. Kukuyu grass cover during this period of initial two-line spittlebug outbreak was reduced by 5%, with an increase in 5% weed cover. Over winter, there was a slow but continual change in the plant community composition. By May of 2019, Kukuyu and Pangola grass cover had decreased by 75%, while white clover cover increased by an additional 5% and weed cover held fast at 10% of the plant community. Diapause broke at Transect HULT1 in April. By May of 2019, the nymph density had reached 97 nymphs per square meter and peaked later in June at 129 nymphs per square meter before rapidly decreasing between July and October from 76 to two nymphs per square meter. By November of 2019, just four months after the peak nymph, de nymph density of 129 nymphs per square meter, the plant community had completely changed and was no longer recognizable. Grass cover at the November 2019 reading was just 2% and was comprised mainly of fountain grass. Clover cover too had decreased from 15% in May to 5% in November. Meanwhile, fireweed cover had increased to 93%. So just to summarize, in the space of a year, two-line spittlebug activity reduced a highly productive pasture dominated by high-quality forages, including kukuyu grass, pangola grass, and clover, to a fireweed-dominated landscape with no forage value for livestock grazing. This Google Earth image of the pasture represented by Transect HULT1 was taken prior to the two-line spittlebug infestation in May of 2018. The red boundary line drawn on the image approximates the extent of the pasture acreage damaged by the two-line spittlebug between 
May of 2018 and November of 2019. The area is approximately 105 acres in size. Two-line spittle bug damage over this 105 acres resulted in 100% loss in grazable forage and equates to a loss of approximately 420 animal unit months of grazing for the ranch. This is enough to support 35 head of cow-calf pairs for one year. This means that the ranch will have 35 less calves to market each year, resulting in an estimated annual loss in revenue of over $14,000. We have been conducting monthly field surveys along a series of transacts at four impacted ranch operations. The transacts are arranged at each location along elevational gradients covering several different ecological zones. These survey surveys help us quantify two-line spittlebug population dynamics, habitat selection, and ecological and economic impacts of the pest. The data is being used to inform our development of best management practices for the management and mitigation of two-line spittlebug impacts. What we've learned so far from these surveys is that damage to pastures from two-line spittlebug attack can be rated on a continuum from light to heavy damage and that this damage typically spans two years. In the first year, the initial attack, only nymphs may be present, hatching from diapause eggs laid the previous fall by roving adults. There is typically no observable damage in this initial attack. In the late spring or early summer of the first year, the first generation of adults emerge. The population is small and damage is light and restricted to small patches. Key grasses in these areas may show a slight decline in cover. By late summer or early fall, the second generation of adults emerge. Their population is typically moderate in size and pasture damage becomes more obvious, but still light. Patches of damaged grass will be larger and may converge with other patches. Grass cover begins to decline and weed cover increases. Eggs laid by the second generation of adults are almost exclusively diapause eggs that will lie dormant over winter. During the diapause period over winter, there will be very little nymph and adult activity. Grasses may, under the right conditions, begin to recover, or they may continue to decline with an equal increase in weed cover. Once diapause in the second year breaks, there is typically an exponential increase in the number of nymphs per unit area over what was observed in the first year. When the adult generation emerges in the late spring to early summer, pasture jam damage becomes moderate covering anywhere from 1 to 10 acres in size and can converge with other areas. Key forage grasses in the damaged areas are reduced to less than 50% of the cover and weed cover begins to dominate. Following the emergence of the second generation of adults in late summer to early fall, the damage will become extensive and cover typically more than 50 acres, while key grasses in those damaged areas will be reduced to less than 5% of the cover and weed cover will often be more than 90%. The weeds that invade these damaged sites go through a succession of dominant species, often starting out with fireweed that gives way to mare's tail and balloon plant or pomicani or blackberry and Himalayan raspberry, depending on the location. In some cases, the palatable grasses give way to low quality and non-palatable grasses such as Hilo and Vasi grass. On the research side, we carry, we've carried out a number of trials this past year, including a series of host plant resistance trials to determine the relative resistance of local forage grasses to two-line spittlebug. We also carried out damage threshold trials to determine thresholds of economic damage to kukui grass and several other varieties of important grasses. We're going to follow up these trials with additional rounds in 2021 to test host plant resistance and damage thresholds for several new varieties of grasses developed in Brazil to be spittlebug resistant. Early this fall, we ran preliminary trials on two pesticides, Botanigard uh, and a Carbaro formulation listed for spittlebug control in pastures. We also continue to work to determine the feasibility of using an in indigenous nematode and a naturally occurring fungal pathogen to control two-line spittlebug. As a result of COVID-19, our plans for workshops over the summer were put on hold. However, 
We were able to create a web page for information on two-line spittlebug on the Hawaii Rangelands website that is accessible at the link provided. Over the last year, I've presented information on two-line spittlebug to nine different organizations and groups. One of those presentations has been recorded as a video that is now available for viewing on our Livestock Extension Group YouTube page. The direct link to the video is provided in the bottom left corner of this slide. Looking ahead over the next year, our outreach, outreach activities will include the release of Two-Line Spittlebug public service announcement videos, which are being developed in cooperation with Carolyn Wong of the Natural Resource Conservation Service and the Big Island Invasive Species Council. We have plans of releasing several extension fact sheets and bulletins on Two-Line Spittlebug identification, management, monitoring, and mitigation and pasture recovery over the next year along with holding educational workshops and field events. Finally, we will be releasing a two-line spittlebug mobile application tool, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. The two-line spittlebug mobile application is currently in development and will be available for Android and Apple phones, hopefully before this next spring. There are two main objectives for the development of this application. The first is to provide users with resources to learn about and positively identify two-line spittlebug, report, track, and monitor two-line spittlebug sightings and populations, and receive management and pasture recovery recommendations based on two-line spittlebug damage assessments. The second objective is to build a database of confirmed two-line spittlebug sightings that will allow researchers and managers to better understand the current distribution of the pest more accurately track movement vectors and spread rates and develop forecasts for the invasion of the pest into new areas. Components of the, of the app are, one, a two-line spittlebug information portal that will provide information on two-line spittlebug habitat, biology, and ecology. Two, a two-line spittlebug reporting portal that will allow users to geolocate, take a photo, and map two-line spittlebug sightings. This will allow them to track sightings and populations. Additionally, the information will be uploaded to a database that will allow researchers to map and analyze the data. A third component is a two-line spittlebug identification tool that will help users distinguish between two-line spittlebug and the other two species of spittlebug that are found here in Hawaii, which are not of concern. A two-line spittlebug management tool is the fourth component. This tool will provide users with information on field sampling techniques to correctly determine the two-line spittlebug population size, assess damage risk, and based on that assessment, provide economically viable management recommendations. Our two-line spittlebug team is comprised of myself along with Dr. Mark Wright, Dr. Dan Peck, and Melanie Oshiro, graduate students Shannon Wilson and Robert Sakuda, and research technicians Justin Ye, Elizabeth Whitney, and Yoshiaki Higashidi. Our partners include the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, Hawaii Invasive Species Council, Big Island Invasive Species Council, Hawaii County R&D, and the USDA ARS and NRCS. You can direct any questions to me by email or phone. Thank you.